But I want to go into uh, distribution, the sure. main thing that I wanted to talk about in this uh, interview. When, why did you decide to distribute on YouTube and what led to that decision? Well, okay. Uh, well, you know, um, well, the first... is great. Everyone should watch it. It's on YouTube. Yeah, <laughs> um, definitely. Well, when we decided that um, it took a, a, like a while for that movie to to sort of uh, gestate, like we were trying to figure out where, we, what do we want to do to it? Okay. Uh, we had sort of, we had sort of shaky music rights. Like we did have well, like our composer uh, for that movie, like he was really great and he gave us the rights to it. Um, but you know, it, I, there were things where we were wondering whether or not how, you know, like I didn't want to be out there like potentially like putting it out there and promoting it and like trying to make money off of it without like including everybody in there but then that will require like everybody to sort of get under new contracts so it was like all right but then we were also at that same time we were about to launch uh the uh, my youtube channel the bespectacle mofo youtube channel mm -hmm. and so i thought you know this was around 2014 right yeah well yeah it was about 2014 but um you know but um i don't think we released it until 2018. Right. um but um we were sort of coming into that and um people really wanted to see it and i felt really comfortable because i've always i've always really liked that movie and people really really enjoyed it and like so we finally decided yeah, to put did it up you see other other filmmakers releasing things releasing indie fiction features on youtube yeah it was some of that but then for me i think i got over myself because i, I you know it was a lot of i remember saying like very specifically uh early on like that i did not want to release movies on youtube mm -hmm. um i remember being very elitist about that I, I have to sort of like you know um cop to that you know where i was just like That's we did not want to yeah but i wish that i had because you know uh if I had gotten into YouTube when people had asked me to get into YouTube, I feel like I would be like in sort of that I would have been a part of that same class as like uh, Ryan Connolly mm -hmm. and like all those folks that came up and sort of like that early YouTube back when there was, you know, it was really profitable, um, you know, but we didn't. And so for me, I just kind of got over myself. Um, I think I have uh, Alex Ferrari to sort of uh, uh, to sort of um, really sort of helped me, like pushed me over the edge. Uh, talking with him and finally I decided that you know um, you know that was the best place for it you know that was the way that we were going to get people to 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 get eyes on it and so you, wanted, you wanted to establish yourself as a filmmaker yeah and we put it up there and first it, it, you know was sort of getting things but it was basically people who had already seen it or wanted to see it and then what happened was it was a simple change of the thumbnail to what it is That's right it. now yeah. And once we changed the thumbnail, then all of a sudden the thing started taking off. And then it started, to, you know, it was getting like a couple hundred views a day nice. and then started to be a couple thousand views a day. And then once it hit the algorithm, um, it started to get close to like 3000 views a day. Nice. And we were, I, you know, I would, I was promoting it and like, you know, every time we would hit a milestone and I would always like, I would also use the, um, you know the because it's one of the best looking things that i've ever done like I, i'll put it up like in front of anybody like i'll be like i'm I, I will show it to people and be like look this is what we can do this is what we did with four thousand dollars in four days i'm extremely proud of it um i think it's the best feature that i've ever done um you know i don't know if it's the best project that i've ever done but it's definitely the best feature and so like you know i was you know it people started sharing it and then it started to become, like I said, it, it just sort of to take off. And then you don't, it's weird to say the word exponential, but like it really took off exponentially. It really yeah, started to take sense. on a life of its own. And- Did you was, advertise it, uh, paid advertising? No, that was the thing. It just like, it just took off on its own. Like it was awesome. just one of those things. And like, um, we didn't want to, you know, like we were definitely promoting it, but definitely, I, it felt like i don't know we didn't want to do like the facebook ads and things like that and then people were sharing it and contacting me and like i think people really resonated with the story nice. um because i think and then we had um a podcast called um um a touch of flavor they reviewed it 
Mm -hmm. uh, on their podcast and they have a big following and stuff like that in the sort of uh, relationship uh, poly community mm -hmm. and they reviewed it for their Thanksgiving Day episode and that was another one of those big boosts um, and they were really really complimentary about the film like they thought it was going to be one thing I think they everybody thought it was going to be one thing and I think the ending is really what people love it leaves you with this really great feeling and so um folks get to the ending and they're like oh man i didn't see that coming and so then you know then they recommend yes. it yeah and so um when folks you know you know like i said it just took off and then like people were seeing it all the time and um and then like <laughs> once it hit like i think about half a million views like it, it was just no stopping it and then i was and just that, like did you think about trying to monetize it through youtube at that point I did. I was thinking about that. Um, and I'm still sort of thinking about that. And then, you know, but, you know, it was one of those things where like, um, like, um, I don't know, it was, I was still wondering about it. Because for me, it's like, like, I don't know, I was enjoying the ride and stuff like that. But I wasn't necessarily doing YouTube for the money. Mm -hmm. um, like, and, but I, I, I you know, I, I go back and forth about it. Well, but like, you can plan a new project with that in mind. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so it, it just for me, it was like, um, I just sort of loved the purity of it. And that I, I just really loved it, like, you know, the sort of like that people were digging it, people were enjoying it. Yeah. And, um, you know, I get to promote it, and not feel guilty. <laughs> well, it's, a, like, it's, a, it's a good, it's a very good sample work and an introduction to yeah. the filmmaker. Yeah, um, that's the thing. Yeah, it's like, you know, I feel the same way about sort of our short BBD. It's like everybody got paid on that film. And, you know, it's like one of those things that can be up there. And like, I don't feel bad about like, you know, uh, promoting it or whatever like that, because it's like everybody was taken care of, um, you know, and did, so did the, uh, uh, the that movie getting a million views. Did that change how you thought about YouTube and indie film distribution? Um, it definitely, um, it definitely changed my mind about indie film distribution because I don't hear about a lot of folks, um, you know, getting a lot, with the exception of maybe folks who are already heavy into the indie film, like indie YouTube space, like Joel right. Haver. Uh -huh. um, like I know Tell Me You Love Me has over, over a million views, I think. And um, it, but that film is also an amazing film. If you haven't seen Joel Haver's Tell Me You Love Me, it's like, it's weird and out there and like it's a space where you can tell like stories that you wouldn't necessarily get picked up by Hollywood so it did sort of say there is something here and more importantly there's an audience right. who's like going to be into um the types of films that I make yeah, um, I got when, I got I got 10,000 views on YouTube for my movie I'm super happy about it yeah and like you know at that point you know like they say that you only need like you know a thousand really dedicated fans right um and you know that that also opened doors for me because not just with um you know people like you know who were like gatekeepers and things like that but it also opened doors in terms of like when i did start like trying to not necessarily monetize but sort of reaching out to people for potential like deals with uh, with the youtube channel i'm also i'm able to say like our YouTube channel has over 1.3 million views, Absolutely. you know, and they're like, oh, okay. You know, and then all of a sudden they want to deal with you rather than like, you know, uh, you they know, not, you. yeah. <laughs> um, so it's, it's definitely open doors. So it's definitely uh, changed my mind about indie distribution. Yeah. I mean, uh, Joel Haver is one example. Mm -hmm. He uses Patreon to monetize the YouTube views and mm -hmm. uh, he's making real money. So not not Hollywood money, but definitely very good indie. No, money. and like you know, I don't necessarily like. Do we need Hollywood money? Like yeah, if your no bills are paid, that. like and you're doing, and that's what you're doing. Like right. if that's what you're doing full time, if that's your job, then you know I don't care that I'm not living in like a three million dollar house. Like I don't care. You know what yeah, I mean? It's all like, nonsense. I mean, a yeah. lot of people, uh, like a huge percentage of Americans, live on like fifty thousand a year. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, there's are, there are certain, my wife is always pointing out, you know, folks who have their own company that, you know, they're, you know, they everybody sort of is making their own thing. Like they're working off of like, everybody's making about $70,000 a year and they share right. in the profits. And then like anything else that they like, they, they do, they sort of use it as a bonus for everybody so that they can get, you know, new cars and things like that, like that sort of thing. And that to me seems like the best sort of outcome of everything. If you can do that sort of thing and everybody's bills are taken care of, 
and you know nobody's really like you know over anyone else everybody's just you know taking care of each other like that's my ideal type of situation man like i i want to do that mm -hmm. uh rather than yeah. like you go know ahead. trying to go for some sort of like big hollywood check right right the uh, i think uh around the world getting a million views is a great accomplishment because uh people around the world around the world have seen the movie and yeah they have like you can I, probably I, tell from the youtube stats that you yeah i see the the uh, algorithms it's a big hit over in india apparently <laughs> yeah <laughs> india wow india, india is great for youtube i was just uh, looking at the stats yesterday 460 million youtube users yeah um so yeah and i'm there there are uh literally i think hundreds of thousands of views from that movie coming over from india and i was like really india but it's a, it's a big deal over there man it's and a big country so with a lot just of like, people and a lot of different types of people yeah so i'm just like i'll take it anywhere yeah. it comes from i'll take it like That's that right. worldwide platform sure um like you're not gonna get like you may be able to get like a certain amount of things from like Tubi and Crackle, and I'm not necessarily against those platforms, and sure. I certainly want to experiment with those. Yeah. But you Amazon know, for direct. a worldwide distribution, yeah, exactly. But from a worldwide distribution market, it really doesn't get any better than like uh, you know things. And like you know, like you said with Joel Haber and stuff like that, you can do something where you know you put it up on YouTube for free, mm -hmm. and then you ask people to support you with the Patreon, Patreon or, yeah. or something like that. Um, you Is know, that something you're people, planning on doing? I think so. I think we're going to move towards a, like a like a, a thing where people can't support us like that. Um, we have, you know, and sort of to get into a, a sort of preempt you or like we're going into what we're doing next is like, um, you know, we're doing uh, what was how to make a movie for a thousand dollars. We've now mm -hmm. we're now calling it the cinema challenge series and we're remaking that. And our first cinema challenge is how to make a movie for a thousand dollars. And what we're going to do is, you know, we're going to have these sort of things what the step by step of our are doing that while we do it ourselves and make a second film for a thousand dollars awesome uh, which is called sex like pizza and but we're also going to have like a workbook that you can like um sort of follow along with and fill in like you know in certain things like you know if you're trying to make lists or you know your answers are going to be different than ours but we will create like a like a typeset so that people can um, sort of fill in their own things and follow along with us and charge like a few bucks for it, you know, that sort of thing so that they can, you know, support the channel at yeah. the same time and, uh, and do that at the same time and, you know, and watch and follow along with us. And then we, you know, you, you give away content, you know, and stuff like that. And then, you know, ask people if you like, if you find value in that, if you find a value in what we give to the community, you know, support us over here or support us over there. Like, you know, one of those things like Patreon or something like that. Yeah, I'll be signing up for the Patreon. Uh, yeah. I appreciate that. <laughs> yeah, no problem. I think uh, you have a good thing here. Um, already uh, over a million people have seen your work. Yeah. Um, Time to and repeat I'm... it and make some cash and uh, also look at... Uh, now, with YouTube, even if you just have a trailer that reaches a million people mm -hmm. and you have the actual movie on Amazon or Tubi, that could still work. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and I'm like, you know, like I said, you know, that, like it's very much, um, you know, it's the other thing about YouTube that's great is that I think a, like a lot of people were sort of dug into the trenches over whether or not you're like an iOS person mm -hmm. or an Android person, but YouTube rises above both of those things. That's right. And so if you share a YouTube link, nobody feels like there it, it, it is ubiquitous for both sets of phones. So yep. a lot of people who are watching those kinds of things on their phones, it doesn't matter if they're on an Android or if they're on an, an Apple device. Um, they're just going to watch it because YouTube is bigger than that. And so that's, you know, the best part about those sort of things. But, yes. um, you know, I've, I've done uh, theatrical runs like one week long at theaters mm -hmm. to get even 2000 viewers uh, in a week is very difficult. At yeah. The theaters. And so getting 10,000, 100,000, a million on YouTube is amazing. This is like a, to me, this is like an epic sea change, kind of like switching from 16 millimeter to digital. Yeah, it, it's very much like, you know, gives you control over um, like how you, how you, you know, and, and also like how you control your own press. 
Right. Um, you know, like if, if you're given like a behind the scenes and stuff like that, the same thing that Disney has now decided, has started doing and stuff like that, where after they release like a movie, they release like a massive, you know, behind the scenes and stuff like that. Whereas in our case, you know, where if you do a movie like, you know, like we're doing, like you make a movie for a thousand dollars, we can also do a behind the scenes and, and show you how we did it. And so that you can go and, and take what you've learned from us and, and apply it to your own projects. Um, cause I feel like there's so many things that people are just unaware of in terms of resources and, um, like things that are available to them for, for little to no money. Um, everybody feels like, you know, it, otherwise we wouldn't have to be these conversations about, you know, whether or not you need a hundred thousand dollars to make a short film like that. Yeah. That's don't know how, old timey stuff. Yeah. It's just in what world, in what yeah. world? I think we're, uh, at the point where. The budget doesn't really matter anymore. It's the skills. Mm -hmm. Tools are available. Actors are available. Distribution through the web is available. So I think it's the, this is uh, as real indie as I think it has gotten mm -hmm. historically. Um, the 90s indie depended on Hollywood for distribution. Uh, yeah. By distribution. Now we can do it ourselves. So I think this is a great, your movie is a great accomplishment. And I'm looking forward to doing that. Uh, uh, no problem. I'm looking forward to you doing a video about how I made a million dollars from my thousand dollar movie on YouTube. Yeah. <laughs> that would be nice. Um, you know, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to the, the, the next sort of iteration of making a movie for a thousand dollars because I feel like, you know, we learn so much, but the technology, you know, not to jump on a whole new tangent, but the technology of the mobile tech uh, and the mobile space has increased uh, in quality so much, even from the iPhone 13 from the 11, which is where mm -hmm. we shot our uh, third feature film, Barbara, on. Um, and I'm, it's not even close. It's not even close. They're not even in the same class. Wow. And so, you know, I feel like just the same way that, you know, digital reached that point where it's like, you can sort of film people. I mean, you could, you could sort of fool people whether or not as to whether or not you could sh something was shot on film or video the phone space is now at a point where if you shoot certain things on the iphone 13 mm -hmm. um you no one will be able people will just think that you shot it with a digital camera no one will be able to tell that you shot it on a phone wow. that i think that has finally gotten to that space it it i would have i don't know I, I thought it was ready for prime time two generations ago but i'm looking at it now but you know now you're shooting 4k log ProRes mm -hmm. on a phone, and that is just ridiculous. Um, awesome. Let's, let's, when, when will your next movie come out? Uh, th that will be next year. We're in production on it now, okay. uh, or pre-production on it now. But um, you know, and but you know, next year we will be uh, to do it. But we should be launching the relaunching the channel uh, within the next month or so. Um, just coming up with, uh, you know, on starting us on our journey and, 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 and allowing people to follow along with us. I see great creative and money-making potential on your projects. I hope so. I hope so. Let's do it. Let's get rich and famous. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll, we'll see do, about that. We'll do a follow-up interview with you when, when the uh, next movie comes out. Yeah, I would love uh, to. I'm shooting my new movie now, uh, Slow Romance 2. Okay. Uh, to get it out through Amazon and but promote it heavily through YouTube, mm -hmm. uh, also Tubi, etc. So yeah. So by the time we talk next time, we'll have a lot more data to compare. Uh, Hopefully. But yeah, I'm glad YouTube is there and some filmmakers are using it. It's the way to go. Absolutely, man. Excellent. And when you're in New York, we'll hang out. All right. Yes, absolutely. The next time I'm there, I will. I will hit you up, man.